Hey guys, it's MC Fixit here. We're going to be working on this Creality CR-6 SE. We're going to be putting in an all-metal hot end by Micro Swiss. This thing is pretty sweet. I'm going to walk you through all the tools, the supplies, and the know-how on how you can get this done yourself. First thing you're going to need to do is go ahead and head over to their website. Make sure to get one that is the CR-6 SE model i believe this works for the max as well they're supposed to have the same setup and so uh pretty small box but uh, has everything pretty much you need except a couple of extra tools um, you are going to want to have you're going to want to have a torque wrench with a six and seven millimeter you're going to want to have at least an adjustable wrench maybe two would actually be better um, and then you're going to need some tools that already come inside of your container right down here and so you have this you have this two millimeter, six millimeter tool. Uh, then inside the box comes with a one and a half millimeter Allen wrench and a seven millimeter Spanner wrench already included in here. So that's pretty cool. It comes with the extra tools that you need. Um, and so let's go ahead and dive on into this project. First thing you're gonna need to do is go ahead and get out that two millimeter Allen wrench and we need to take the screws off of here. So we have two screws on the top of this fan shroud. And so we're going to go ahead and take these off. I think it's easier to take this one off first. And you know how these work. These are kind of a pain in the butt. They can easily fall. So I like to have kind of fingers nearby to grab that little screw. And put it someplace you're not going to lose it. This one's the same way, but a little trick that I like to do with this one is once you get it kind of started, I kind of lift up just a little bit on the shroud box right here. And let it naturally come out just like that. And then this one is connected, so as you pull this, You'll see this yellow and blue wire need to come off just like that. And you can go ahead and put this down off to the side. That's perfectly fine to lower it down like that. The next thing we're going to need to do is go ahead and get this sock off. So if you just start peeling the old sock off, the new one is blue. So you can save this for future uses if you want to. So please be careful. But the next thing you're going to do is go ahead and power on your device. Keep your hands free and clear of everything here. Then we're going to go ahead and click control temperature and we're going to get that nozzle temperature up to 235 degrees celsius and that will take a couple of minutes to do uh, and so just keep an eye on it here and uh, then we'll head back up once you've hit 235 degrees go ahead and unlock the extruder and then go ahead and push this towards it uh, then we're going to slowly pull it out and what pushing it in does is it should give you a little bit of this on the end. And also underneath you should see on your nozzle just a little bit of kind of like hanging filament as you can see right here. And that's okay. And then we're going to go ahead and turn off our machine. And so let that thing just go ahead and cool down. So while it's still warm, we're going to go ahead use your adjustable wrench and remove the nozzle and you do want to make sure you're holding on to the hot end because if you're not doing that you can have issues so just take the little bit of extra precaution and this nozzle will be hot so be careful it was 235 degrees now you can say this nozzle this nozzle has been used and abused so it is going in the trash can after it cools once you've got that done go ahead and let your machine cool down and after the machine is cooled down you can go ahead and actually just go ahead and turn it off you will want to unplug your power supply it's just an extra added protection right there just go ahead and unplug it set that off to the side so the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and remove the clip and I do like to hold on to it. It's just a pair of needle nose. You don't have to have these make sure. Uh, you actually don't have to save this, but if you ever want to go back with this setup, you will want to save that. And then you're gonna go ahead and use your adjustable wrench and get on here 
and remove the tube. Comes off pretty easy actually. Or maybe mine wasn't tightened down properly. One of the two. So there we go. So once you get it to here, you're going to go ahead and press down and pull out. I would encourage you, if you're going to save it, just go ahead and put things back together so you know in the future how it came out. So once you have that tube off, we're going to go ahead and work on these two screws for the fan. And they're the same thing, two millimeter, as the cover was. And notice how long these ones are. You will want to make sure you put the right screws back in the right location. Also make sure to put your fan back in the right way. I'm just going to go ahead and leave that screw in there to help hold that together. No, I'm not. I'm going to go ahead and take that screw out. So remember when you're putting it back in, don't put it with this, the beautiful little sticker. Put it this direction. So we're going to use that same two millimeter wrench to get these top two out. But I am going to go ahead and take this off first. So just push this and that can just kind of go behind. That will help you get this second screw out. So two millimeter Allen wrench. Go ahead and start twisting it. And then I'm going to go ahead and start the second one. Okay, that one's out. And that one's out. And then we'll go ahead and get these screws out. Now these are kind of the medium size of the three. So the long ones went to the fan. The medium ones go on the top here. And then the last ones go on the cover. So inside your box here, you're going to look for the Allen wrench that comes with it, which is right inside this little package. This is a one and a half millimeter Allen wrench. So this is going to help you take off the thermosistor and the heat cartridge. So now I think is the fun part. We're going to go ahead and start putting this all together. I'm going to scoot that out of the way a little bit. And kind of show you all the parts that it comes with. I would encourage you to make sure it is a true micro Swiss. There are some fake ones online. You can also get all the instructions right here. Get a little paper to do all that. And so it has everything you need to get started and to make some really sweet prints. And then it also came with this little Allen wrench too. So go ahead and find your titanium thermal break and your heater block. And uh, there's one that has four sides and there's one that has two sides. It is very important that we screw this in on the one that only has two sides because this needs to sit on the bottom. So you have the opportunity to tighten down your other components. It does come with this little wrench and go ahead and put that on, make it pretty snug, just like so. It should look like that again, that's the bottom, that is the top. So you're gonna go ahead and put this in, and it is important, this line is also on the side that has this one right here. You have to find the little grub screws, which come in this pouch, and try your best never to lose it because they are so tiny and it seems like everything is black. This is probably not going to be the best camera work, but it's okay. So I'm just going to like barely start it by hand, just like so. so. And then I'm going to kind of like pinch it together. Trying my best to keep everything nice and flat against the table, but also together. I then get this grub screw tightened down in there. Just like that. Go ahead and test it. So that grub screw is on the side with the two dots. And it is not on 
that side. So that's the side you want to tighten down with the two holes. And then depending on what you're going to uh, be using, you can use the nozzle that came with it, or if you're just going to continue doing what you normally print with, and it's not something like nylon or carbon fiber, probably just going to put one of these on to begin with. These are just regular brass ones. So we're going to go ahead and feed that in. So you just want to make it nice and tight, holding on to the block. Again, we're going to really crank down on it a little bit later. So you should be looking like this right now. So the next thing we got to do is the heat cartridge and the thermosistor. So we'll go ahead and put the thermosistor in. So as we begin to put this hot end back in, we do want to remember that there are three different sizes um, of those screws. So we need the middle size screws. And so go ahead and find those. And then we're going to do that two millimeter again. So once you have those two screws in, you are going to have to put your cable back in. So once you have those two screws in, go ahead and put your cable back in. So once you have those two screws in, we are going to need to put this ribbon cable back in. Make sure it's seated properly and locked into place just like so. So we're gonna go ahead and plug back in the power for our printer. And then we can go ahead and turn on our printer. And then controls, temperature. And we're gonna put it at 220 degrees Celsius. Go ahead and let that warm back up. So I am getting a little bit of a weird smell uh, and it is starting to barely dissipate. It's Kind of hard to describe, but it definitely kind of stinks at the beginning. I don't know if it's just burning off whatever they put on it at the factory, uh, but I do notice a little bit of a smell, but now we're up to temperature, and so that smell is beginning to dissipate, so I hope that smell is not a continual thing. And then once we are all the way up to temp, we're going to go ahead and tighten things down one more time just to make sure. So this is that grub screw, one and a half. And then we're gonna do it the same to all four of these. This just ensures our we are tightened properly. Without it being up to temperature, it is hard to guarantee, so that's why they have you do this. Perfect. So you're just gonna go ahead and tighten that down till it clicks and it just clicked, so we're good. Uh, this one is really hard to hear. It's more of a feel because it's a cheap Harbor Freight one, so you may not have heard it actually click, and that's okay. And then I just like to tighten kind of everything else down, so it's just a good opportunity to make sure all your screws, while it's still warm, are tight. And then we're going to go ahead and let this thing cool down. So go ahead and put it down into cool down mode and uh, allow it to get down to zero degrees. So after you've turned it off, make sure that you unplug your power supply. And so it's unplugged. Next thing we got to do is go ahead and put our fan back on. And this is going to use the longest of the three screws. And this little clip right here needs to be facing the wall. I'm just going to spin it by hand once or twice to get it started. Do be careful, things can still be hot even if you've let it cool down. Uh, there's still some heat coming off of this one. So just be very careful. Use your best judgment if you need to step away for a minute, make sure to do so. Do make sure this is lined up properly to go through the middle plastic piece as well. 
and you don't have to kill this this is just going into plastic and then into metal so just nice and snug there so next thing to do is we're gonna need to go in and get this tube in and this is probably the most interesting part of all of it they're actually using some stuff from the plumbing world uh, to make this work really well and so you're gonna go ahead and slide that up I'm actually going to disconnect this because I have heard that if you don't get this in super straight all the way down that you can have issues. So when we're pushing this down, you want to make sure it goes till it seats all the way down at the bottom and then go ahead and spin this on by hand. So that goes all the way down into the very bottom of the block. And so that's really important that's in there correctly. So once you got that on there by hand, go ahead and grab your adjustable wrench and start tightening it down. You don't have to kill this, but you do want it tight. That right there will do. We're going to go ahead and hook this back up and in. that in if you have a beautiful little device like this. I do like it because it does help kind of hold it up. So we are going to go ahead and put this sock on and it goes with the big opening on this side and the small opening on that side. So there's really one last thing to do and we're going to go ahead and put this back on. So go ahead and put it behind that blue and yellow wire behind that little clip there and we'll go ahead and kind of slide this up into place just like that. You have those two little screws and here's a little trip trick as well while this is still kind of down go ahead and put this guy in this is the one on the left i find this one to always be the harder one and so if you can just go ahead and put that in i haven't tightened it all the way down yet just got it started that allows you a lot easier than trying to feed that through which just doesn't seem like it works very well Uh, then tighten it down. Next thing to do is go ahead and put your filament in. And I had to use this from an old video, so some of the stuff on it is not there. You go ahead and put it in, and you slide it to your extruder. Sometimes you get little junk coming out. That's why I have some of the new pieces on the new one. But again, this is an old video. Go ahead and slide that through the extruder. And sometimes you do have to kind of finagle it in there and just keep pushing it and keep pushing it and keep pushing it and you gotta sometimes wiggle it back and forth and then you should start seeing it through that Bowden tube going down and around and get it all the way into that hot end and you will be set to go and you are done it is kind of sad you don't get to see that beautiful hot end uh, but hopefully it was helpful putting this micro swiss CR6SE hot end on your CSR6 by Creality. Uh, I believe this works for the Max as well, but pretty easy fix. Uh, you will want to make sure you do a couple of things. This is really important. When you are in whatever slicing uh, slicer settings you're doing, you're going to want to change the reaction amount to 3.5 millimeters at 35 millimeters a second. Uh, that's really important that you do that. And then also, I'm using just a basic hot end, but if you're using their all metal hot end that they that they provide, which I will be using soon, it does say you'll need to increase that by five to 10 degrees Celsius when using. So that is important to know when you're doing some of those cooler uh, carbon fiber prints and things like that. I hope this was helpful. If you do have any comments, go ahead and put them in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching today.